Take your Bible and turn with me to the book of Micah. I'm not even going to tell you where that's at. How many knows where Micah's at? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Micah, right? <laughs> Can y'all tell I'm in a mood this morning? I love being in a mood. Uh, there's, there's good parts and bad parts about being responsible for bringing the Word of God. Sometimes you're able to just hear it. Sometimes the Spirit of the Lord is so clear that it's unmistakable, and I love those times. I, I love it when I feel a witness in my spirit about a particular subject or topic that is being said at the moment. We all do realize that the Word of God is living. It's not just a book that was written thousands of years ago, but it is still alive today. If God said it then, He's still saying it today. Can you say amen? So sometimes it's easier than others to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Well, this was one of those times that it wasn't as easy. And, uh, you know, as many years as I've been doing this, um, I... I, I, I realize he always shows up. I, I realize that maybe he has something else. When I say he, I'm speaking of the Holy Spirit. Has something else on his agenda for today. Sometimes it's almost as if he wants to see how hard I'll pursue him. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Have you ever prayed or been in need of something and you felt like it, heavens were brass? And, and it just seemed like that sometimes you can pray and get an answer. And sometimes you can seek God and he shows up. And sometimes it looks like that he, he doesn't come as quickly as you'd like him to. I think all of that fits into the economy. And it's part of the genius of the Holy Spirit to keep us engaged. So I want to say right off the bat that has nothing to do with the message I feel like I'm going to share with you today. That sometimes if you don't feel it, it's like Pastor Darrell said a little bit earlier, you just have to go ahead and do it. Go ahead and praise it till it comes through for you anyway. How many found the book of Micah? I did all that talking just so you could have time to, talk, to find it. Micah chapter 2 is where I'm going to start. Um, I, I approached this message about 10 years ago according to my records. And through this word that I want to share with you today, I felt like the Lord had said something uh, in addition to or new, uh, and I added to some of the, the notes that I have had. But as I was praying, I began to hear the Lord speak uh, another word for me towards this. Um, the Micah chapter 2, I'm going to read just portions of this verse in three different translations. The first is the King James, and it says in Micah chapter 2, verse 13, it says, The breaker is come up before them. They have broken up and have passed through the gate and are gone out by it. And their king shall pass before them. Say with me, and their king shall pass before them and the Lord on and the Lord on the head of them in other words I want you to get the picture that there's there's a group that's being led and in the very beginning he's called the breaker somebody say the breaker Micah chapter 2 verse 13 in the NLT the version says your leader will break out and lead you out of exile, out through the gates of the enemy's cities, out of the gates of the enemy cities, <laughs> out through the gate of the enemy cities. Somebody say more than one. I'm going to read it again. Your leader will break out and lead you out of exile, out through the gates of the enemy cities, back to your own land. 
Your king will lead you. The Lord himself will guide you. I want you to get this. I, I want everybody not to think this is not for me today because it is for everybody. Micah chapter 2 verse 13 in the TLB translation says, The Messiah, somebody say the Messiah. The Messiah will lead you out of exile and bring you through the gates of your cities of captivity back to your own land. Your king will go before you. The Lord leads on. Father, in the name that is absolutely above every name, we see this word developing in front of us that we are sometimes held captive, that we are sometimes held in, and sometimes we are held out. Sometimes we are under an oppression, under another's jurisdiction. Sometimes, Lord, we feel like that we have been closed in, that there is no ability for us to experience that which you have given life to, which is from without. So, Lord, I'm asking you to help me develop this storyline today that at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we will see ourselves led out of bondage, led out of limitation, and into a place of liberty, freedom, and prosperity. That nothing will be able to stand in our way. That nothing will be able to hold us back. And absolutely nothing will keep us from being led by you to that promised place of life and peace. And we'll thank you for it. And if I could get this whole church to say with me, amen, amen, amen. How many has ever heard of the story of Chuck Yeager? How many knows who Chuck Yeager is? In just a few weeks will be 73 years that Chuck Yeager broke the sound barrier. Most of us don't ever think about that. Most of us never even approach wondering what that's all about. I don't know if they even teach that in history any longer. But Chuck Yeager did something that no one else had done up until that point. Just to be on the fair side, they actually said there was a man just a few weeks prior to Chuck Yeager breaking the sound barrier that someone else did, but he did not get the credit for it. Don't know if that's absolutely true or not. But there was an invisible barrier that had to be broken. There was an invisible uh, force that was keeping success from going forward. And so there was a need for a break. Through. How many, is there anybody in this room today feels like that you could use a breakthrough? Three of you? Just three? I want to ask you, is there anybody under the sound of my voice now? that you have absolutely no goals to reach or there's nothing else you would like to accomplish. Uh, maybe you're satisfied with the, the ill health that you have in your body. Maybe you might enjoy the struggle of paycheck not being enough and always in a bind for money. Uh, maybe you like the turmoil that you live in. Maybe you enjoy being in bondage to uh, drugs or alcohol. Maybe you, you don't care whether or not your children find their way clear 
to a whole and happy and prosperous life. I'm being a touch facetious this morning because I understand that every one of us has some level of goal inside of us that we would like to reach or that we would like to see somebody we love reach. Can you say amen? How many of you do have, say, family members that, you know, you'd love to see them break out of the bondage that they're in? Sure we do. How many in this room today, perhaps you have a, a physical barrier that you would love to break through and not be plagued with ill health in your body anymore? Of course we do. Is there anybody in here that feels like perhaps God has called you to a greater level of service than you're able to walk in right now? Let me see that hand. Of course you do. So I want to spend the next little while talking about what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? What seems to be that obstacle that's in front of you that is keeping you from a from accomplishing whatever it is that you have need of in your life. I think the first thing that we need to do in order to have breakthrough is realize I need a breakthrough. I do understand that there's something that goes on inside of us. It's, it's driven by pride. That if we're not careful, we live in a climate and an environment that it's all right for us to make excuses and blame somebody else for what either is happening or not happening. But can I say that there's no one else responsible for Wes Courtney or your, your ability to, to break through than for me to decide I'm not going to be stuck anymore. There was something interesting about Chuck Yeager and those that were around him. There's always the ones that say you can't do it. Do y'all have anybody in your life that's the negative Nelly? Are you the negative Nelly? Are you the one always coming up telling somebody how they ought to be doing something? Somebody told me last week, said, boy, that message you preached last week was good except for that toe-stepping that you did. I think that's my calling. <laughs> I, like, I like that right there. Are we supposed to clap? All right, let's give him one of them golf claps. <laughs> There's a tremendous battle going on inside of me right now. Y'all know that, don't you? I come to the understanding a long time ago that I need to surround myself with the right kind of people. I need to surround myself with the right message into my ears. I've come to the understanding that there's always going to be somebody that don't see what I see. I'm speaking as it's me, but I want you to put this on for yourself. Uh, how many of you uh, understand that maybe your thought processes are a little bit different than somebody else's? And it's okay. God never intended us for us to be just cookie cutters and just like one another. He said, you're fearfully, you're wonderfully made. So that means that we can find our way through this thing for ourselves today. But I want to say this, that um, this is why it's important for me to be surrounded with faith-filled folks. I don't need somebody telling me I can't or casting doubt on whether I should. But my part is to be an encourager like Barnabas was. I, I don't know about you. I think I'm going to stop and say this right now. I pray that the spirit of Barnabas, the spirit of encouragers, 
would rise up in this congregation that we wouldn't be against each other, but we would be for each other and we'd be encouraging to each other. If somebody has a question whether I can or not, you figure out every kind of way you can and say, yes, you can. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I need people that can talk faith into my ears, into my hearing. Somebody that's going to support what I'm doing. Somebody that believes in the message of Jesus Christ can make a difference in your life. Chuck Yeager, two days before he went into his uh, airplane that day, he, he did something and he broke two ribs. And he couldn't close the cockpit because of this. He had a, a friend named Jack Ridley that fashioned out of a broomstick a way that he could shove that cockpit closed. Now that's the kind of friends you need right there. How many knows that some of you, if that had been you, they'd have been saying, you know what, you might not ought to try that. This is going to be bad enough as it is. You don't want to start out with brokenness. But instead, there was somebody. How many knows that if we look, God's always got somebody that's going to whisper secrets of the Holy Ghost in our ears. He's never going to leave us nor forsake us. I need a friend that's going to help me. You see, some of our friends can help us achieve our goals and visions, and I do believe that some are sent by Satan to keep you from it. It's going to get a little bit deeper in just a minute. As uh, they continued to move towards it, he said this. He said, right before I broke through, he said, I thought that this aircraft I was in was going to come apart because some previous to that had. But yet there was something inside of him. Now, I, this is where I'm fixing to leave the Chuck Yeager story and start talking to us. There was something else inside of him that said, it's necessary for me to break through. I pray that the spirit of breakthrough and the urgency thereof would come to you no matter where you are, no matter what you're facing today, what you've been facing for years, what your family's been facing. It might be a generational thing that you need a breakthrough from. I don't know. All I know is, is that today is the day that you can choose to make your breakthrough. You can't create a breakthrough no more than a surfer can create a wave to ride. A surfer can't create a wave. He can only be ready to get on it when it comes. You can't create breakthrough. That's coming from, we read it, the breaker. Coming from the Messiah. Coming from the Lord himself. We can't create that. That's his job. That's his place to actually bring us through the breakthrough. He said, I will lead you through the breakthrough. Here's the deal, church. We've got to be ready to ride the wave of breakthrough when it's created by the breaker. I don't know if this is making any sense to y'all or not, but it's making real good sense to me right now. There's been a few times in my life that I couldn't go on the way I was going and I needed something to happen for me and became desperate. And in 1986, I prayed a prayer like this, Lord, whatever it takes. And while I have the faith that he can bring me through, I don't just throw a statement out like that anymore. But I broke through. And for all the trouble, for all the tests and all the trials, it's worth it today. Because I am now in the place. You hear me say this a lot. I'm one beggar telling another beggar where I found bread. 
And there's an authority behind what I say now because I know that the breaker has broken me through. Is there anybody in here that can give him a clap offering and say, he's broken me through? I've been broken through on. Watch this. I love this. I love this. He said, all of a sudden, I was in a great calm. Can I tell you, you might have been in a struggle for years. And find you finally find yourself in the place that the breaker is ready to bring you through. And then all of a sudden, somebody say suddenly. I go from chaos, turmoil, pain, lack, not having enough, upset, to calm. Somebody asked me not long ago. Said, Brother West said, when you was younger, said you used to preach hell, fire, and brimstone. You'd get all excited and you'd do this. What happened to you? I said, I became a pastor and not a preacher. I'd rather spend the rest of my days trying to help you than to point out some shortcoming that you have that the Holy Spirit's in charge of showing you. I want to help somebody today. I don't know if you've ever been, and perhaps you may be there today. But if you're in a shaken, uncertain, drawn out situation, if there's limitations on your life, if there's barriers that's been placed in front of you, you may have to say, I don't know why. You might have to say, I don't know when. But I do believe that it's time for us to say, I'm tired of being held down. I don't think the church has 20 years to work this out. I don't think you have 15 years to work this out. I think there's people that are waiting for the church of Jesus to rise to the occasion and become the voice and the influence that God has intended for us to be. I preached last Sunday and I said this, that Jesus said to that church, He said, you got it going on, you're doing good and all that, but you have left your first love. He said, and because you, you do that, He said, unless you can get it right, He said, I'm going to come and take the lampstand out of your midst. I'm going to come and take your place of influence. And I don't know about you, Revival Temple, but I have absolutely no interest in being a church on the side of Walker South Road with no influence. We need to be influence in this community. We need to be influence in our parish. We need to be known around the state. Listen, if you'd come. So what is a breakthrough? And how does it happen? There's a story in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 5. And it's about David. In 2 Samuel chapter 4, there's people being murdered for no reason. In 2 Samuel chapter 6, we see complete turmoil going from chapter 4 into naming a king. And then from naming a king, the presence of the Lord returning back to Jerusalem. I think we could compare this same story to our individual lives. We can go from turmoil, chaos, not enough, generational curses, and then the rightful king is put in place. And it don't just happen there were battles to be fought and battles to be won. But then the presence of the Lord was ushered back to where it was supposed to be. 
If you'll indulge me just for a few more minutes this morning, I want to read parts of this story to you. 2 Samuel chapter 5. I'm going to be reading from the NLT. It reads a lot easier and it breaks it down to where we can understand it. It said, Then all the tribes of Israel went to David at Hebron and told him, We are your own flesh and blood. In other words, we are of the same people. Verse 2, In the past when Saul was our king, you were the one who really led the forces of Israel. And the Lord told you, You will be the shepherd of my people of Israel. You will be Israel's leader. This is the elders of Israel coming and talking to David. Verse 3, So there at Hebron, King David made a covenant before the Lord and all the elders of Israel, and they anointed him king of Israel. Now I want to make a statement here that it ministered to me when I realized this, is that Dave, this was actually the third time that David had been anointed as king. First time was when he was a boy, and Samuel anointed him. Chose him above all of his older brothers. Y'all remember that? That was the first time. The second time was when David was made king over Judah. And he was only had the influence over that particular tribe. But then all of a sudden it was noticed that even when Saul was king, David was the one leading them out. It wasn't that it was just David, watch this, but it was the one that had the anointing. Everybody in this room should be praying for a yoke-breaking anointing on your life. Because whether you're leading a congregation or you're leading a family or you're leading a team at work, no matter where you are, if you're leading, you need a yoke-breaking anointing on your life. Because there's somebody around you that's being held captive. There's somebody around you that's being held down. There's somebody around you that's not being re- not reaching their potential in God. And they're waiting for somebody, the right one, to lead them out. I'm just asking, are there any godly spiritual leaders in the house this morning? If you are, raise your hand and let me see. You say, well, pastor, I'm not a pastor. You don't have to be. All you have to be is a godly man or woman with an anointing on your life to lead your family. How many wants to lead your family? Then this is for you. So they appointed him as king. David was 30 years old and he reigned for 40 years. He went on to say this, then then David led his men of Jerusalem to fight against the Jebusites, the original inhabitants of the land. Let me talk about that just for a second. The Jebusites were people, they were the original inhabitants of the land. But in order for the true presence of God to take its place in that city, the ungodly had to go. You see, that's the difference in religion and relationship. Religion will allow you to come to church, sing your song, give your tithe, and keep living the way you're living. But relationship, on the other hand, will cry from deep unto deep and say, come on up here. You can't keep living like that with the enemy right inside your own camp. You can't, have, you can't live free if you're bound inside. So David knew if, if, if Jerusalem was going to be the city of God, that the Jebusites had to go. So he started cleaning from the inside out. Revival Temple, if you would, just bow your head for a second and let's do a little personal inventory in here right now and say, what am I carrying in me that's not conducive to the Spirit of God? What ideas am I having? What what actions do I do? What am I continuing to embrace? What am I entertained by that's keeping the presence of God from being first and foremost in my life?
Holy Spirit, would you show us today those things that you desire to get out of us, to take out of us, for us to give out so that your presence can abide? You see, church, somewhere or another, we've been taught that we can abide in the presence of God and still entertain things of the world. And that's not the case. In the simplest form, Jesus or John said, I'll have to decrease so you can increase. And every day, y'all, I need to be giving up something inside of me that's unlike God, whether it's my thought, my attitude, my limitations, the way I think about something. Are you with me this morning? Can you hear what can you hear the plea that's in the voice today? Then it went on to say this that he got rid of the Jebusites and they taunted him, saying, You'll never get in here. Watch this. The Jebusite said, Even the blind and the lame can keep you out. Isn't that just like the devil to tell you you'll never be free from that drug? You'll never be free from that attitude? You'll never be free from that pain? You'll never be free from that hurt? You'll never be beyond that limitation? You'll always be sick? I declare in the name of Jesus that today's the day that we can step outside of the limitations. I declare in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit that today is your day not to be held back any longer because the Spirit of God Himself is here to lead you out. They said even our lame and our blind is stronger than you are. Isn't that just like the devil to try to convince you that you're held captive and you're not strong enough to get out? That you, I've got you where I want you. I've had you and your family there for years. And you can do nothing to break free. I declare in the name of Jesus in Micah chapter 2, he said that the Messiah, the breaker, has come to lead you out today. He's come to lead you free. He's come to lead you to freedom. And all we have to do is realize that the wave of freedom is rolling. Get out our spiritual surfboard. Get on it and let's ride. The breaker has come to break you free. He's come to break you out. And even though the enemy tells you that our blind and our lame could keep you out. The scripture says, for the Jebusites thought they were safe. I want to preach another message Daryl just briefly touched this morning. Talking about when the children of Israel was led in between the, the mountain ranges and the Red Sea and Pharaoh coming behind them. It looked like that they were doomed. They couldn't go across the mountain. They couldn't go across this mountain. They couldn't go back. Can I tell you? I want you to look at it like this. God wasn't trapping them, even though Pharaoh said that the land has encased you and entrapped you. God wasn't trapping them. God was setting them up for a miracle. Are y'all hearing me this morning? God is not trapping you. He's not allowing the devil to trap you. He'll let the devil chase you. But watch this. Like the children of Israel, in the right place, the devil will only chase you to your miracle. How many is ready for a miracle in your life today? Would you stand up with me where you are? You're ready for a miracle in your life today. You say, well, Pastor Wes, I don't know how it's going to happen. Right. Well, Pastor Wes, I don't see how it can happen. That's great. Pastor Wes, I've been, my family's been like this for, for the last hundred years. What do you think is going to break us out? The breaker has come to lead you out today. As I, as I find a place to jump off, I want to really invite you to, to start searching yourself and I want you to name that place that you want to be led out of. 
I'm going to fast forward through the rest of this, this story. So the Bible says that when the Philistines heard that David had been anointed as king, they came out against him. Why? They wasn't fighting him when he was king of Judah. Could it be that they remembered the day that that little red-faced boy walked up to their biggest, baddest fighter and said, you come to me with a stick, with a sword, with a staff, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. I might look small, and in your eyes, devil, I am small. But I'm not standing here in my might. I'm standing here in the power of God's might. Could it be, could it be that they said, we can't allow this boy to get a foothold here. So let's go after, let's go after him now. Let's not let him get time to get settled and get straight and get his army together. Let's take him out now so they come against him. Watch this. Here's, here is the, one of the keys. So many times we don't wait for the Lord to lead us. So many times we think we've got this and I, I know how to handle this. I've been here before. I've done this before. And so what we do, we just jump out there and we do what we think we know to do only to get defeated. But the Bible tells us right there in the next verse, it says, And David inquired of the Lord. Revival Temple, it's time for us to start praying. It's time for you to start inquiring of God. When you come up against something that's not working, when you come up against something that's got you held back, when you come up against something that's been that way for a long time and you want to be free, you can't just jump out there. Watch this. You can't go to Barnes and Nobles and read enough self-help books. You can't get on the psychic hotline and let, and let them tell you what to do. But there's only one place for a spiritual problem to be handled and, and handled properly, and that's in and by the Word of God. And it matters what God thinks. And it was if David realized that I fought the lion in one, I fought the bear in one, I fought Goliath in one, I might ought to talk to him about this army. Shall I pursue? God said, surely you go after them and you will pursue. Watch this. The next thing that happened when David pursued, he said, watch this. He said, and God broke out on my enemies. He said, watch this. Then he changed the translation. He said, God broke through on my enemies. Like gushing water through a dam. Like water bursting through a dam. God will break out on everything that's coming against you. It's not your fight. God's going to fight your battle for you. You just have to be standing there ready to receive the spoils when he does. Notice he said, and the Lord broke through like waters bursting through a dam. He said, and I call that place Bel Perizum, which means my God broke through for me. <laughs> Could I get our prayer team to come up this morning? Would you, would you come on down and get ready? I want you to be ready to help somebody with a breakthrough today. I want you to be ready to begin to be the breaker, the representation of the breaker. Now watch this, one more little thing. So he defeated them Philistines there. I want everybody in this room that's ever fought a fight spiritually to listen to Wes Courtney right now. Please 
focus your attention on this next thing. The Bible said that after God broke through for them, that the Philistines came back again. I want you to know that you can break something, you can win a battle, but you got to understand He's coming back. What is the devil coming back for? Are you ready? You can only break through because of an anointing. The Bible said that the yoke is broken off the neck because of anointing. Now listen to me. We get all caught up sometimes thinking that we're all of that and the devil's really after me because I'm really knocking the cover off the ball. No, no, no. He's not after your plans. He's not after your money. He don't want your house. He don't want... You know what he wants? He wants your anointing. Because the anointing is the only thing that will break a yoke. Y'all listening? That's why we've got to be anointed. That's why I've got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's why we must keep the Word of God alive in our mouth and then out of our heart. Because it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. Sometimes I'm telling you, y'all listen to me, there's going to come some time or another that something's going to happen that you're not going to be able to talk your way through it, out of it, around it. But it's going to take an anointing to break a yoke. There's some things your children are going to face that you're, you're disciplined, you're, you're pleading, you're, you're, you're enabling, whatever. It's not going to, it's not going to hurt or help. It's only going to feed that thing. The only thing that's going to break it is an, an anointing. I don't mean to go on about this, but I, I feel something leaving me right now. Parents, y'all listen to me. If the most important thing you can get in your life is an anointing, one that is that is covered by the blood of the Lamb, one that is provided by the Word of God, one that is given forth by uh, ushering the spoken Word of God. It comes as an unction begins to rise up out of you. I'm telling you, there's been so many times that I felt like my back was against the wall. Melissa and I would grab hands, come into an agreement, and say, God, let the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost break that thing right now. And 20 minutes later, get a phone call. You won't believe it. Somebody say, I need an anointing. We all need to understand Coming to church is wonderful. Thank God for you. I love you for coming. I get all of that. But I pray that the Spirit of God would come on you in such a way that the David inside of you would rise up and later beyond be able to say, the Lord has broken through on my enemy like waters bursting through a dam. It, we could connect it to the scripture where it said, when the enemy comes in like a flood, I will raise a standard against it. So when the enemy is present, understand, he said, in the presence of my enemies, I'll prepare you a table. We've got to quit uh, thinking that if we've got something we're fighting, that something must be wrong. I'm telling you, one of the greatest indications you can ever have that you're living right and you're doing right is when the devil keeps coming against you. Why? Because he's after your anointing. Don't give the anointing up because it's the only possession you have that can break a yoke. Well, pastor, how do you get this anointing? You get it on your knees. You get it through reading the Word. You get it through impartation of the Holy Ghost in your life. Be ye being filled. And you can't wait till you need an anointing to try to get an anointing. Did y'all hear what I said? You can't wait till you need it to try to get it. I know this is a poor analogy. 
But years ago when I was in law enforcement and they, they taught us about weapons and weapon retention and that sort of thing and being ready, I've had many people say, you mean you walk around with that weapon loaded? You may as well have a claw hammer. But here's the deal. It's about being ready. We need to be ready for the devil and have our spiritual weapons loaded. When he shows up, you don't have time to go pray. You don't have time to repent. You don't have time to, to get ready. But all we need to do is stay ready to ride that wave. And when the breaker comes to lead you out, get on that spiritual board and say, I'm riding it out into my liberty, into my freedom, into my prosperity, into my well-being, my peace, my joy, my happiness. Now